everybody. Let's give God praise. Thank you, everybody, for inviting me in such a beautiful church. I'm, my name is Gary Cole. I'm a deacon in Jersey, Arkansas. I'm here visiting and taking care of my mom, and I come, my cousin, my uncle, and everybody. And this is such a beautiful place. I feel like I'm at home. I feel blessed. So I like to bless y'all with this song. God's got a blessing that's waiting for you. If you do all the things he told you to, be honest, faithful, kind-hearted, true. Because God's got a blessing that's waiting for you. My father got a blessing. My father got a blessing. My father got a blessing that's waiting for you. If you do all the things he told you to, be honest, faithful, kind-hearted, and true. Because God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing that's waiting for you. My father got a blessing. My father got a blessing. My father got a blessing that's waiting for me. If I do all the things I'm supposed to do, be honest, faithful, kind-hearted, and true. Because God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing that's waiting for you. My father has a blessing. My father has a blessing. My father has a blessing that's waiting for you. If you do all the things he told you to, be honest, faithful, kind-hearted, and true. Because God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing that's waiting for you. Thank you. On, bless the Lord one more time in this place. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Look, I would, we're going to go into the Bible real quick, and I'm, we've been talking about something has to break. And earlier today, we was talking during our meeting, one of the words that I used, given you guys, was the word engage. And so often, the enemies of God would taunt you, and you would allow them to come into your territory to engage in conflict with you. But I want, if you could, go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I want to talk to you about a young man named David. And next week when we finish up, this summer I have uh, several things are going to happen. Because if we want something broken, we have to set standards. And one thing we have to understand in order for us to set standards on anything Something has to break. I haven't said a verse. I'm just going to be talking about most of it, but primarily verse 45. Verse 45. And one thing that we have to understand is that we're not dealing with an ordinary young man when we talk about David or we talk about uh What's going on right here? We're not talking about an ordinary giant neither. We're talking about, when we say Goliath, we're talking about a bully, may I say. Because he was so terrifying that 
he had the army of God afraid of him. It's, 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 it's amazing. No man in this room that has sense or that consider himself a man would allow another man to come into his house and bring about conflict. So this Goliath was the type of person that I'll cross your line and strike fear into you and nothing will happen to me. We have those kind of people in our life that will cross the line with you and strike fear in your life, and you would you 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 would you would sub, you you would just receive whatever they're saying. But David was totally different. That when David, I'm talking about the story a little bit, but when David noticed that this uncircumcised Philistine crossed the line. He sees, he sees, David sees his brothers and the rest of the men in the army afraid of this giant. You know, the Bible does not talk about that when Goliath came to, to charge them or ask them questions or, or taunt them that he had his army behind him. Goliath himself was so tall and his armor would strike fear in anybody. And I'm quite sure that up until this point, the children of Israel, those, the, the, the men that were in the army, they have heard all kinds of stories about Goliath. See, here's the thing. We, 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 we hear stories about people and things and tragedies that we become afraid ourselves. So that when we are faced with those struggles and those tragedies and those trials, we tend to draw back when the enemy flexes at us. It's a reflex and we'll draw back. We'll draw back with fear. The enemy said, I have came into your territory and simply took over and you're not doing a thing about it. Me being a man that if anyone crosses the line in my home, I will have a problem with someone coming into my home and trying to take advantage of my house. Now you didn't cross the line whether I'm going to die standing up for my territory or whether I live standing up for my territory. When you cross that line, I'm ready to put my life on the line. So, 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 if we, if, we, if we simply continue to be afraid of facing our giants, those giants are going to continue to draw across the line in your life. So, we, we talk about protecting our sons and our daughters. The enemy would attach itself to that next generation. So, what I have here, I have these, this chain folded. This chain represents the generations of my father, father. So those things have attached itself to me. And now I'm, 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 if, 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 if the people that know me or knew my dad or knew his dad, hallelujah, they'll say some of those same traits have attached itself to me. And so, so I'm wondering, and, and as I'm growing to become a man, why am I this way? Why is things constantly happening to me in my life? If my daddy didn't take out the giants that he had, now I'm, this, I'm faced with that same giant. I'm faced with that same giant. But I feel that God is calling for Davis to be raised up in our families to face the giant, to break that generational curse. Hallelujah. See, see the problem is that so often when we are chained, chains are attached to us, the only way we can become free is somebody bring a key. But I serve a God who has given us the keys 
to unlock those chains in our lives if we're willing to, uh, that, that has been attached to our generation. So my goal is my grandson, too, my grandson was here, and the one my wife had him on one that just walks up on the floor, amen. And, and one of the things, I want to break whatever curse that has attached itself to my life so that my grandsons won't have to deal with my devils. Hallelujah. I want to break the curses, hallelujah, that has attached itself to my life so that my daughters won't have to deal with my curses. My general, I don't think y'all hear me. 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 Hallelujah. So Pastor Charles, if I'm going to move forward, I have to stay. Stand up to my giants. Uh, I have to stop when when I come to in, then when I come to the battlefield and I see my dad afraid to stand up for himself. There comes a time when we say, "Wait a minute, you messing with the wrong man right here." Hallelujah! I, I remember Pastor Kennedy when I was a young man, and there was a bigger guy than I was, and and, and I was riding my bike, and and he, he took advantage trying to take my bike from me. I stood up for myself. But, but, but none of my uncles, none of my brothers was around. But when I, when I informed one of my uncles and I informed my brother that the person that I had to fight is on the basketball court where we were playing at, they stopped what they were doing and they charged this person up. And the person said, I didn't know he was your brother. Hallelujah. But I, I came to tell somebody here today that you got to confront those devils in your life. And he'll say, I didn't know that was your daughter. I didn't know that was your son. I didn't know that was your family member. Hallelujah. And then the devil recognized, wait a minute. I know that I crossed the line. I know that I tried to attach myself to his sons and his daughters. But I'm not just facing any old Pastor Charles Emery. I'm facing a David like Charles Emery. I'm facing a David like Pastor Anderson. I'm facing a David like Pastor Kennedy. I'm facing some Davids in this place. I told y'all this morning, I came to engage in the battle. I came to stir up some stuff. I came to let the devil know that you crossed the line in my life. I'm tired of your tactics. I'm tired. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. So, 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 so I, I begin to think about this and I, I said to myself, I said, if those devils that attached itself to my dad wasn't just a few devils. And so, because he had to fight his daddy's devils. And he had to fight his daddy's daddy's devils. And now, the same devil that he didn't beat is trying to attach itself to me. And so I say to myself, now, Pastor Charles, get them chains over there. Give me a couple of links right there. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something. And I want you to understand this. Just, just get a couple chains. Get the short ones. Yeah, that one and this one right here. This is cool. Yeah, I'll the link right here. I'll take this one. Show y'all something. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read just a little bit. Verse 45, and it said, "David, and said David to the Philistine, Thou cometh to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the army of the Israel, whom thou hast defiled." Now David here with boldness. He is engaging himself in conflict. Now already Goliath has already struck fear in those other men. But now David is speaking to this giant with authority. With authority and with clarity. And he says to him, he says, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands. And I will smite thee, smite thee, and take thy head 
from thee, and I will give thy carcasses to the host of the Philistines, to the Philistines this day, unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That there is a God in Israel. See, here's the thing that, that, that you, you cannot allow the enemy to speak for you. And, and the way he speaks for you is that he, he's the only one doing the talking and fear begins to take over. Now, Pastor Charles, come on here, I'm going to show you. Now, notice, again, I said I got these chains on. This is what we've been dealing with for the whole year. And some of you, y'all, y'all have gotten y'all chains. And next week, we're going to finish this whole thing off right here. Now, as I'm traveling through these generations, there are conflicts that my dad didn't even accomplish yet. He didn't beat. So his giant will attach itself to me in my walk. In my walk. Touch this one to me. And so now I'm dragging along the very devil that my dad couldn't beat. But in order for me to, to stand up to it, I have to, de to develop the courage to stand up to the very devil that dad was afraid to stand up to. So here it is. So, so now I'm moving through generations. So, so, so now it catches up with me because I've been weighed down with those generations that has already attached itself to me. So now that it catches up with me, it attaches itself, something else attaches itself to me. And so now I'm pulling and, and pressing. I, I remember the Paul was talking about I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. But before he says that I'm forgetting those things which are behind me, and they become, oh my God, I don't think y'all hear me right now. It becomes a pressing, hallelujah, because everything begins to weigh on you. Everything begins to weigh on you. Hallelujah. Everybody's looking at your leadership, but while they're looking at you, they don't understand the pulling of the chains. They don't understand the pulling of the pain because connected to these chains is the hell that my dad been through. Connected to these chains is alcoholism. Connected to these chains are brutes. Mm. I don't think y'all hear me yet. Hallelujah. I'm still not free because all of these chains represent years of bondage. Every link represents trauma. Every link represents sickness. Every link represents bondage. But God said, I'm going to raise up a David in you. I'm going to raise up a David in you. So you begin to realize that my son is going through the same hell that I've been through. So, and if I'm going to stand up to him, I need to stand up to him now. So, King Saul, I haven't been telling made for your armor. I can't fit it. This ain't what I'm used to fighting with. This ain't the kind of warfare I'm used to. But I've been trained in the art, uh, hallelujah, of a sling and a rock, hallelujah. God will give you something that you're good at, hallelujah. God will make you, hallelujah, one of a kind. Uh, I'm different from my brothers. I'm different from my sister. I'm, mm, if I can speak to somebody right now, pull my, I'm going to pull my weight around. Because next week I'm going to be free. Listen. The same devil that tried to attack, that attached itself to my brother, tried to attach itself to me. 
He's addicted to drugs. Even until this day. Hallelujah. But when I saw him doing it, I said within myself, the devil is a liar. I break this thing right now. I break this thing right now. So, 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 that same devil that attached the alcohol, the, the, the drugs, tried to attach alcoholism to me. So when I got the chance to taste it, the taste was already gone. Hallelujah, because I didn't like the smell. I didn't like the way it looked. And it didn't taste like I thought it would taste like, like a soda or something. Hallelujah. So I said, this ain't for me. So I said to myself, Pastor Kennedy, everything that makes my friends and make my brothers and sisters feel good that they're taking, it never, I can never find the high that they felt. I wanted it. But one day, back in 1994, I got married to a woman sitting right there who brought me to a church on 5th and Clark where I caught the Holy Ghost. Now that same high that I was looking for, I couldn't find it in drugs. I can find it in drinking. I can find it nowhere else. But one day, it was a revival of a little old lady from the south came down, laid hands on me, and I caught the Holy Ghost. But when I caught the Holy Ghost, I began to dance and shout. Now that's when I got high. That's when I got drunk in the spirit. That's when I started fighting my lions. That's when I started fighting my bears. That's when, oh my God. But look, look. I'm still carrying my chains, Pastor Terry. I still got that generation attached to me. We're coming into year eight in this ministry. And we're breaking it right now. 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 Somebody need to shout, something has to break. 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 Woo! I didn't come this far by faith to give up. I came today to break something. I came today to let the devil know, hallelujah, I will engage in the battle. I'm not afraid of my daddy's giants. I'm not afraid of that. Oh, my God. I came to engage. I came to engage. So, 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 I love it. Because all David had was his God. And what he was good at. I'm not good in a sword fight. I lose in a sword fight. I don't know how to shoot a gun. I lose in a gun fight. Hallelujah. But I know how to pray. I got neology. I'm specialized in that. I think I got a degree in that. I got several degrees in neology. I know how to get down on my knees and pray to God until something happens. I came to break something. I came to break something. Listen. Listen. David stood up to the very giant that his brothers drew back from. He 
He won the one. He won the one. But he was the one. He wasn't the one that they would consider to fight this giant. But he was the one. The one that was chosen. The one that was already in training. The one that saw a, tra a, a serpent creeping and stood up to it. Now, so here's the breaking. Here's where he breaks the curse. The Bible says he goes down to a brook and he picks up five smooth stones. Whew. I picked up harmony. I picked up courage. And I picked up prosper, prosperity. And then I picked up peace. And most of all, I picked up love. Because after I get finished with this giant, matter of fact, I'm going to take harmony and I'm going to sink it into the forehead of the giant that scared my brothers, the one that defiled the, the children of Israel, the one that defiled the army of the living God. But I got four more left because I heard he got four brothers. Because if they run up, I'm going to sink one into their foreheads. I dare the devil try me right now. I got my stone in my sling. Mm. Listen. Woo. Mm. My God, my God, my God. Woo. Mm. Woo. My God, my God, my God. Mm, I don't think y'all, I don't think y'all ready for this. 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 It was the same God that sent the prophet to Jesse's house to anoint a king. It was the same God that trained David against the art of taking down some giants. Because if a bear stood up on both his legs, he can stand up to 12 feet tall. Mm. Now, Goliath was tall, but he wasn't 12 feet tall. But if a bear got close to you, see, here's, 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 here's why I know that David knew not to allow the enemy to get too close. <laughs> they say, the old saying is, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. That's the saying. But you keep your enemies at a distance. Because when they start attacking, you already be able to load yourself up. See, here's the thing right here. David, he knew that if the bear got too close, if he just swinged his arm across his body, his claws would rip everything out of him. And if the lion got too close, the lion would pounce on him, push him down and go for the juggler. And snatch it out. Because the devil knows if I can get to the head. He knows that if I can get to the head. I can control the whole body. That's why somebody gets in a chokehold. You're trying to get them off of you. You, you, you focus on getting them off of you. But, but most, most wrestlers they realize. That in order to get them out of the chokehold. You drop. You fall down. Slide right up out of it. But some, some people are so, so, so unique with that chokehold that even if you drop, they'll wrap their legs around you and keep you down. You, you, saw, you saw those, those matches. You saw how they do it. They're, they're in it to win it. But David knew that if I allow this giant to get close to me, surely he would take me out. 
But David was on the battlefield with a slingshot, five smooth stones, but he also had God. Goliath was on the battlefield with the one that carried his shield. In his sword, in his armor. In order for you to take down a giant, you got to have faith in what you're good at. You got to have faith in what you're good at. Pastor Terry, if we're going to break some chains next week and we're going to cut some things, we got some boat cutters. I'm going to get some big boat I got boat cutters back there, but I'll get some bigger ones because some of us got some big chains. We've been, we've been locked down for years. I'm believing God that God's going to break whatever, whatever it is. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. I, I want, I want, next week we're going to get up here right at noon. We'll say the names of the ministers. today that we're going to be tag teaming with. And I want you to prepare yourself for this. Denise, prepare yourself. Charlene, prepare yourself. April, prepare yourself. I need some Goliath slayers. Minister Harris, prepare yourself. We're going to do five minutes each. We're going to tag each other in. Minister Hibbler, prepare yourself. I want y'all to wear what you're good at. You hear me? You hear me? And Pastor Charles, you're going to take us out. I'm going to start it. I'm going to tag the first person in. So we got Denise, Charlene, April, Anthony, Minister Harris. We're going to tag each other in. And I want y'all to be ready. I'm asking y'all to be some chain breakers. You hear me? I want you to come ready to break something. Break something. I'm serious. Break something. Amen. Every heart and mind open. Listen, I want you to lay your hands on yourself right where you're standing. And I want all of us to be mindful of what we do this coming week. I want you to do your fasting. Choose three days this week to fast. And those of you names I have called in here today, God is going to dump something in your spirit. In your spirit. In your spirit. And I'm going to tell you what the enemy is going to try to do. Try to give you a reason. On why not to do it. That's when you should do it. Amen. Amen. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank and praise you. I thank you for the hand of the people being laid on themselves, on their pain. I thank you, God, right from your throne room right now, God, that you are healing right now. You're healing right now. Let your healing power flow in this place right now in their lives that whatever their need is, sickness, disease, whatever they need, God, you do it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I thank you, Lord, because the healing, hallelujah, is going to cause an overflow in their lives that people around them is going to be healed, God. People in their homes, people in their apartment buildings, people on their jobs are going to be set free. People that they're going to be talking to on the phone is going to be delivered right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, because your people are going to be free, not only physically, but spiritually, mentally, and even financially, God, that they are going to be free. They're going to experience your glory, your grace, and your power for who you are in their lives. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that if those that have to go into the courtrooms, that God, that you're going to find them not guilty. I thank you, God, hallelujah, that the innocent people that have been locked up for years are being released right now. I thank you, God, hallelujah, the people that are on ventilators right now, God, their lungs are being restored right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Deliverance has come to this house. Healing has come to this house. Healing has come to our homes. Healing has come to our jobs. Healing is riding in our cars. Healing, healing, healing. And God, we give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you for the guests that have came here on today, God. We are honored to have them. God bless them, God. Meet their needs. Cover right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Cover their ministries right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, have your way. Mm. Somebody give God a great big praise in this place. And I want you to shout one more time. Something has to break. 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 Has to break. So God, we thank you. Now, God, as we get ready to leave this place, 